Welcome to the Idaho Business Podcast, the only Idaho podcast focused on providing profits for Idaho people. If you love our state and love small business, you are in the right place. We interview local legends, learn business, and have way too much fun doing it. You're listening to the Idaho Business Podcast with your friend, host, and all-around great guy and owner of New Clean Commercial Cleaning, Spencer Ward. The Idaho Business Podcast is sponsored by Dell's Outdoor Advertising. These guys are an institution when it comes to billboard advertising traditionally or digital uh, billboard trend uh, advertising. They are represented from Pocatello all the way to Blackfoot, and they will tell you uh, this is a great way, and I will tell you this is a great way to have top of mind awareness for your clients, your p- potential clients. Uh, there are some great things that still can be accomplished in billboards, uh, even, even though we're in the Facebook and social media marketing you know, realms of the world right now. So if you, you contact uh, Rob and you, and you set up a three-month uh, deal to be on the billboard, he'll give you your installation for free. Or your, um, or your first month for free, excuse me. And again, you can go to idahobusinesspodcast.com, click on their logo, their name, and find their information to get that deal rolling for yourself. And they are fantastic at it. So go see them today. If, if everyone, and like we said, this is not an antitrust, anti-government you know, you know, thing, but like if everyone, if everyone trusted their government, crypto, thing, crypto wouldn't even be a thing, I don't you know, but right, yeah. let's, let's just get real here, you know, <clears throat> but, you know, but not even, don't. yeah, not even trusting them if they just did what was in the best interest of the people that mm-hmm. they're supposed to be serving. So, yeah, I remember stories in economics class at BYU where they would get paid every hour. So you, you know, you work eight hours, but after the first hour of work, you get paid for your first hour, then you'd run to the store and spend your money. And then you'd come back 15 minutes later and then you get paid again for another hour because if you waited until the end of the day to get paid, the money from the first hour of work was worth like half of what yeah. the last hour of work was worth. So that's a state of hyperinflation. And, and to yeah. be clear, we're a long ways away from sure. that in the US. But 8% a year is no joke. Okay, maybe 7.9. I want to trust what they say, you know, the winky face here. Um, to understand Bitcoin is to understand monetary policy and to understand the root of money. So the reason that Bitcoin was created in 2009 at the end of the, uh, of the or at the beginning, I guess, um, of the Great Recession, the Great Financial Crisis, the way that they decided to code Bitcoin, so there's an anonymous coder, whether it's a single person or a group of people, we don't really know, but the pseudonym was uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. And they created this, this open source uh, project called Bitcoin that had specific programmable. And programmable is important because that's the nature of the code. You can't change the code that was released, right? Um, Programmable features of money. And so a couple of things that people like about Bitcoin is that it's capped at 21 million Bitcoins that will ever be created. You can can create other Bitcoins, you can copy it, whatever. But Bitcoin that we're talking about, BTC, will only have 21 million Bitcoins ever created. And it's released on a schedule. So at first, you know, 100 new Bitcoins were released into the into the world by the code every 10 minutes. And then it halves and it halves at a specific programmable um, rate that, that we know, right? Unlike fiat currency or the dollar or any central bank's currency, there's no cap. Um, there's no schedule for when they're going to release new money. So for the first time ever, um, we have this programmable, trustless, decentralized money that we can start basing forecasts on. We can start understanding. You know, we know how many new Bitcoins will be created until the cap. We know that once there's the cap, there's no more created. And so for the first time, it limits currency, right? Even gold doesn't work like this because the higher the gold price goes, the more incentivized gold miners are to go out and mine more gold. They'll hire more people. They'll take on more debt. And so you'll see fluctuations in this in the new release of gold mm-hmm. coins or gold into the ecosystem. So for the first time ever, Bitcoin is created. Yeah, you can't hold it digitally, but that's one of the features, not a book. Um, the feature of not holding it, or excuse me, not holding it physically, 
um, is because we want money that can go from person to person, cross border to any address without government knowing about it. So if you try to take your gold coins from uh, the US to Zimbabwe, like think about all the checkpoints you got to go through and how you got to mm-hmm. smuggle it in, right? Um, you can't do it. They'll catch you, right? But with Bitcoin, anybody that has access to a computer that has ac- access to the internet, you can send it. So by design, Bitcoin is a digital only money with a la- uh, capped supply and a perfectly known transparent uh, release structure or su- inflation structure. So it inflates until it hits the cap of 21 million and then boom, it stops. Um, you can it at that point, argue that it gets deflationary. So a lot of people started to like this, me included, back in 2012, because it's the first time. I mean, at the time, the US had a very stable currency. We had a very stable economy. We were just getting out of the Great Recession. Nobody was complaining about inflation. Asset prices were skyrocketing. People were recovering. The unemployment rate was going down. But if you think about countries like Argentina or Zimbabwe or emerging markets, their currencies could fluctuate 20, 30% in a month. And so they couldn't trust. So in my mind, that's how I was drawn to Bitcoin is, oh, this is a good solution to replace the craziness that these emerging economies feel. And it just took a decade to realize that perhaps maybe the most dominant, well-known, established superpowers economies aren't as solid as we thought that they were. They're a little bit more fragile. So for a lot of people, it just provides... um, some peace of mind knowing that they can put money or hard-earned dollars into something that perhaps isn't at the mercy of central bank policy or you know, uh, treasury policy or government official policy. So I, I think that's the reason why people like it. And is, is it true that you know, most fiat currencies like paper currencies, many of them don't last over 200 years, right? You name one. Yeah. <laughs> so that's 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 one thing we have to put in, in consideration right there, people. So, and and I think there's something to when countries get massively indebted, they'll just decide to debase their currency, and it ends up crushing the economy. So think about the Treaty of Versailles at the end of World War One. France, the U.S. actually the U.S. said it was a bad idea, but England and France got together and created this massive amount of uh, repayment obligation on the German people. And, you know, in today's dollar, it, it was like a half a trillion dollars if you account for inflation. But back then, it was just completely unpayable. There's no way, right? It was going to enslave the entire population to pay this war debt. And so what Germany decided to do was just debase their currency like crazy. Just the idea of using dollar bills or, or fiat currencies as toilet paper. Back in that time, you had to take a wheelbarrow full of cash, German marks, to buy a loaf of bread. And so what that ultimately led to was like this rise in populism and then the second world war. And so like, it's not to be underestimated how powerful like currency manipulation and and debasement can become. And it really can lead to a lot of ugly situations if the governments aren't careful about it. Agree. So if I'm getting back a little bit off of uh, fiat and back onto crypto, Bitcoin, we hear so much about Bitcoin and, it's not all just about Bitcoin, right? Because we hear Bitcoin, 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 but there's so many other you know, valid crypto options out there yeah. that have more options, that more have more uh, ability to, you know, you know, 10x, 20x, 100x your investment, you know, but Bitcoin has the ability to probably, you know, 10x your, you know, your investment pretty quickly. Yeah, so the creation of big Bitcoin um, Bitcoin is mono purpose, right? The one purpose. It's it's uh, uncensorable, trustless, decentralized money. That's it. That's all that it does. And that's all that it's supposed to do. And that's all that the c- community wants it to do. And there are other currencies that have been released, cryptocurrencies. I don't like using the word cryptocurrency, other blockchains and projects, because Bitcoin is the currency, right? Um, but other projects have been released like Ethereum where they realized, the developers and the investors realized, hey, this technology that powers Bitcoin can actually be used for a lot of other things, and it can disrupt a lot of other industries. So it's less in the form of a currency and more in the form of an investment into early stage tech. So think of other currencies like Ethereum or Luna or Solana or you know, pick your poison um, as 
analogous or, or the same as investing into the internet in the 1990s, right? It's this new technology that can disrupt the world. Um, okay. A lot of people thought that the internet would exist alongside already well-established industries like the radio and the new and the newspapers and the television. Um, what they didn't realize is that it was going to go on to disrupt all of those industries, right? Um, so the internet kind of was the protocol that made every industry better. The same thing is happening with these blockchains, unlike Bitcoin or aside from Bitcoin, where the technology that was created only able to be created in the 2000s when computing power had evolved and you know semiconductors had evolved and chips and whatever. But it's it, blockchain isn't its own standalone innovation. It's going to go into every industry that we know and disrupt it. One I'm excited about is finance, my own industry, what it's going to do to make these processes more efficient, um, music rights, internet, web three. I mean, every industry that we can think of now in some form can be improved by utilizing this blockchain technology. And so that that's how you think of anything aside from Bitcoin. I like it. I like it. Well, what would you, maybe the top so maybe the top three things you would tell people that are on, maybe on the fence or maybe not even on the fence, just thinking, holy crap, what do I do in this economy? And I don't know about, you know, this crypto, you know, this cryptocurrency thing, you know, what, what were the, maybe the top three steps you would tell them to take, I guess, at this point? Yeah. So I think first learn about what it is and kind of educate yourself so you can use it and understand like the purpose. So, you know, simply like download a Bitcoin wallet and start transacting and send some Bitcoin back and forth between your family members. Um, then kind of branch out to Ethereum and the other, the other approaches. Once you decide and get comfortable with it, and if it's something that you want to pay attention to and you believe can benefit you, then you have to decide and make like kind of an analyze how it fits in your overall portfolio and what it does for you. So, I'm not saying that our approach is correct for everybody, but I think it's pretty good. Um, we built a framework to look at these speculative asset classes and these emerging technologies. And, and what we said is, you know, when you're building your portfolio, you have to categorize the different types of investments you make. So first off, you have what we call your safe money. And I think I mentioned this on the first episode, but just good old cash in the bank, insured municipal bonds, just liquid money that you need in case something goes wrong. Yes, it's inflating. Yes, we it's not ideal but you still need to have insurance. I hate insurance, but you need to have it, right? It's just one of those things that you have to have. So your safe money, um, then build your sacred money. So own companies, own equity in companies, whether it's your own company that you're running or stocks that you pick that will continue to pay you increases, uh, income increases over time. So grow dividend growers, right? Um, then once you have that and you can sleep well at night because you've kind of built this robust portfolio, then speculate on this emerging technology where if you get it right and and you make a, a strategic bet on a company or a technology or a cryptocurrency, and it goes from being 1% of your portfolio to being 30% of your portfolio, and you rebalance and your overall portfolio is better. You're accelerated towards your goals. You can retire earlier or give more money or buy a, something that you wanted. Um, so I think that's the best way to frame it. It's really, really important that people understand this is like the riskiest asset class ever. It's emerging. Like this is the first time in my entire career and probably the last time that we will see a completely new asset class be created. It doesn't yeah. fit into any asset class that existed prior to cryptocurrency. So with that, you know, tread lightly, be careful. But I do believe that it has the power to change people's lives, change industries, and in fact, make our lives better. And takes away the trust required that we place into individuals and organizations. And we can just trust transparent code now. To me, that sounds like a much better solution. Yep, I agree. I was just watching a Seinfeld episode the other day. And uh, I think Jerry said something, because one of his girlfriends said something about email me. And he's like, what is this email thing? Right. You know? And that really, probably in the 90s, we're all like, email, what is this fooey? You know, let's not be that person later on when we're <laughs> looking back at crypto thinking you know crap you know sh crap you know exactly we, we, we could have been we could have been thinking let's jump on this instead of being this speculative you know person i think 
yeah, we, we look back and it was obvious that the internet was going to change everything. But if you think about what transpired, transpired was the internet bubble, the dot-com bubble, the crash in 99, right? And there were some people that got so caught up in investing in these tech stocks that they lost everything. I mean, we're talking 95% decline in the, in the process. So what we've learned from that is do not ignore innovative technology, but at the same time, allocate to it in a responsible manner because you can make a bunch of money and you can better your situation. But if you do it in an irresponsible manner, you're probably going to, you're probably going to be mad at yourself, right? You'll probably, you know, crash like we did in the dot com. I don't know if crypto is going to crash 99%. I'm, I'm sure that a lot of the projects are going to go to zero. Um, but if you take a smart approach, you know, imagine you build this really robust portfolio and you have 1% of your portfolio in Amazon in the 1990s. Where yet now? They just announced a 20 to 1 stock split because their stock price was so high. I mean, the b- biggest company in the world, right? Mm-hmm. Love them and Apple, and it's kind of bouncing between it. So we knew that they were going to revolutionize everything. And looking back, it's really obvious, but you've got to, you've got to navigate this in a responsible manner because those money, that money and those dollars that you put into your portfolio, those are sacred money. Like you have spent hours of your life, you know, at work just to make that money. So you've got to be responsible, but it is something that's exciting. It is. I like it, man. I appreciate you coming on the show again today. I'm going to definitely, we're going to have to keep you coming back if you, if you'll have us. Sure thing, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate the offer. Um, to all those that are listening and they're thinking, shoot, Jackson obviously knows his stuff about uh, the financial world and they want to talk to you. How do they uh, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, so you can go to our website. It's uh, freedomdaysolutions.com. And then my email is just jackson at freedomdaysolutions.com. I'm happy to work with, with anybody or answer any questions or just jump on the phone and chat. You can tell I like talking about this stuff. So appreciate cool. you having me on, man. All right, guys. Until then, uh, enjoy your week. Go out there and kill it. And uh, just don't let the negative stuff going on in our country get you down or affect how you run your company. Go out there. You can still find ways to kill it. You can still find out ways to be happy. And uh, don't let those negative Nancys get you down. So enjoy your week. Thanks again, Jackson. Adios. The Idaho Business Podcast is sponsored by New Clean Commercial Cleaning. This is my company, guys. I'm telling you, I'm not just because I'm the owner, uh, the, the creator of it, but uh, we are a great company for servicing uh, your, your janitorial needs, your carpet cleaning needs, your stripping wax needs, all your floor maintenance needs. We are there for you. Uh, we're all, every, and everything is backed up by the we're not perfect guarantee. And if it's pretty much if we, if you call and we don't get a hold, and they, you don't get a hold of us. Uh, we will call you back within an hour and fix the problem within 24 hours or the cleanings on us. So that is our promise to you. Uh, and if you call or go into the Idaho Business Podcast uh, website, click on the new clean logo and book a uh, janitorial solution huddle with us and mention that you heard about us on the podcast, you'll, and you'll get two free office, I mean, the two free restroom floor cleanings for your office for free. Tile and grout in your restrooms will be sparkling clean. And that's that's the offer. Tell you, take us up on it. You won't regret it. There's no strings attached. So go see them today. See ya. Congratulations on spending a couple of minutes getting a little bit smarter, having some fun, and supporting the Idaho business community. If you're feeling the love, make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you are.